The aorta is the largest artery in the human body, and arguably one of the most important. It receives oxygen-rich blood from the left ventricle of the heart and supplies it to the body via the systemic circulation. The aorta begins at the left ventricle and terminates at the level of L4, around the level of the umbilicus, and supplies a number of major arteries and uh, vital organs. The aorta can be divided into four sections, the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, the thoracic or descending aorta, and the abdominal aorta. The aorta terminates by bifurcating into the left and right common iliac arteries. Let's talk about the first part, called the ascending aorta. The first section of the aorta is the ascending aorta. It arises from the aortic orifice and ascends to become the aortic arch. It is approximately 2 inches or 5 centimeters long and travels with the pulmonary trunk within the pericardial sheath. The left and right aortic sinuses, also known as the sinuses of Valsalva, are dilations in the ascending aorta, located at the level of the aortic valve. These sinuses give rise to the left and right coronary arteries that supply the muscle of the heart itself, the myocardium. The next part of the aorta is the aortic arch, which is the continuation of the ascending aorta. It begins at the level of the second uh, sternocostal joint and arches superiorly then posteriorly and to the left before moving inferiorly. The aortic arch is approximately 5 centimeters long and is connected to the pulmonary trunk by the ligamentum arteriosum, a remnant of the fetal ductus arteriosus, and terminates at the level of about T4 vertebrae. There are three major branches which arise from the aortic arch. Proximal to distal, these are the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. The brachiocephalic trunk is the first and largest branch of the aortic arch. It ascends laterally and splits into the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. These arteries supply the right side of the head and neck and the right upper limb. The next branch is the left common carotid artery. It ascends up the neck and supplies the left side of the neck and head. The third branch is the left subclavian artery. This supplies the left upper limb. Some clinical anatomy. A condition that can be found at the aortic arch is coarctation of the aorta. It is a con congenital condition that occurs when there is a narrowing of the aorta, usually at the insertion of the ligamentum arteriosum. The narrowing of the vessel leads to increased resistance to blood flow, which increases the afterload, the pressure that the heart must over uh, the work against to eject blood. This results in left ventricular hypertrophy. As the coarctation is located distal to the vessels that supply the head, neck, and upper limbs, blood supplying to those areas are not compromised. On the other hand, blood supply to the lower limbs is reduced, resulting in weakness of the lower limbs and a weak delayed femoral pulse, which presents clinically as radiofemoral delay, which just means that there is a mismatch in timing when pulses are felt in the arms, the radial pulse compared to the femoral pulse. Coarctation of the aorta is a very important condition to catch because without intervention, these infants often do not survive past neonatal period. Treatment for coarctation of the aorta depends on the age of diagnosis and the severity of the condition. Common interventions are surgical. However, balloon angioplasty and stenting may be used as first line. The third part of the aorta is the thoracic aorta, or descending aorta, which continues from the aortic arch and spans from the level of T4 to T12. Initially, it begins 
to the left of the vertebral column, but approaches the midline as it descends. It exits the thorax via the aortic hiatus in the diaphragm, where it becomes the abdominal aorta. The branches of the thoracic aorta in descending order are the bronchial arteries, mediastinal arteries, esophageal arteries, pericardial arteries, the superior phrenic arteries, supplying the superior diaphragm, and the intercostal and subcostal arteries, which are paired arteries that branch off throughout the length of the posterior thoracic aorta. These are nine pairs of intercostal arteries. The abdominal aorta is the last part of the aorta and is the continuation of the thoracic aorta. It begins at the level of the T12 vertebrae and terminates at the level of L4 vertebrae. At the L4 vertebrae, the aorta terminates by bifurcating into the right and left common iliac arteries that supplies the lower limbs. The branches of the abdominal aorta, there are many. In descending order, these are the inferior phrenic arteries that supply the diaphragm, celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, middle suprarenal artery, renal arteries, gonadal arteries, inferior mesenteric artery, median sacral artery, and lumbar arteries. The three anterior branches, the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery of the abdominal aorta are very important as they supply the gastrointestinal tract. In summary, the celiac trunk supplies the foregut, the superior mesenteric artery supplies the midgut, and the inferior mesenteric artery supplies the hindgut. Some clinical ana anatomy, aortic dissection. An aortic dissection is a serious condition which occurs when there is injury in the innermost wall known as the tunica intima of the aorta. This tear creates two channels for blood flow. The first is the normal lumen of the aorta and the other is into the wall where blood remains uh, stationary. And you can imagine the blood that remains in the wall can result in uh, constriction of the aortic lumen leading to a reduction of blood flow to the rest of the body. Aortic dissection is a medical emergency and can quickly result in death due to insufficient blood flow to the heart or complete rupture of the aorta. Aortic dissections can occur anywhere along the aorta but the most common site is the beginning of the ascending aorta. Patients with an aortic dissection will classically present with a tearing chest pain which radiates through to the back. Other symptoms arise due to decreased blood supply to other organs such as stroke or mesenteric ischemia. Other causes of aortic dissections include chronic hypertension, a weakened aortic wall can be due to you know, Marfan syndrome, or an aortic aneurysm which we will talk about next. The current gold standard first line investigation for an aortic dissection is a, com is a CT angiogram. However, uh, MRI angiograms, so MRA, and uh, transesophageal echocardiogram can also be used. Treatment for aortic dissection depends on the type of uh, aortic dissection. There's type A, um, which develops in the ascending aorta, whereas type B, involves a, a tear in the descending part of the aorta and may extend to the abdomen. Type A aortic dissection involves surgery. And here what happens is the surgeon will uh, remove as much of the dissected aorta as possible in order to stop blood from leaking into the aortic wall and a graft is then used to reconstruct the aorta. Medications are also used to reduce heart rate and lower blood pressure to prevent worsening of the dissection. Similar management is for type B, but mainly for type B, it's medication.
clinical anatomy, aortic aneurysm. An aortic aneurysm is a balloon-like bulge or dilation of the aorta to more than 50% times its normal diameter. Aortic aneurysm can occur anywhere in your aorta. However, the most common site for aneurysmal changes is the abdominal aorta. This is known as triple A, which is the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Aortic aneurysms can arise because of an underlying weakness of the vessel walls, such as in Marfan syndrome, or they can be due to pathological processes, such as an aortic dissection. An ultrasound is used for diagnosis, and treatment involves surgical replacement of the weakened vessel wall with a piece of synthetic tubing. Aortic aneurysms that are small usually do not present immediate threat. However, if left untreated, a large aneurysm can rupture. This is a medical emergency and is often fatal. Patients who have an abdominal aortic aneurysm may experience back pain, abdominal pain, and abdominal pulsations. It is also possible that the aneurysm can result in compression of the nerve root, causing pain and numbness in the lower limbs. Patients who have an aortic arch aneurysm may have a hoarse voice due to involvement of the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, which wraps around the aortic arch. However, it is possible for patients to not present with any symptoms at all. So in summary, this video we talked about the different parts of the aorta, the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, the thoracic or descending aorta, and finally the abdominal aorta and their branches. We also discussed three clinical conditions, the aortic coarctation, which affects the aortic arch, the aortic dissection, which mostly affects the ascending aorta, and the aortic aneurysm, which most commonly affects the abdominal aorta. Thank you for watching.